hard to imagine that before 1999, no patient, none with cervical cancer received chemotherapy. But in 1999, based on a series of New England Journal publications, we began to add cytotoxic chemotherapy cisplatin to radiation. And even then, after that, it was unclear how to treat recurrent cervical cancer. And it was not until another decade, a study that I was honored to present on behalf of the gynecologic oncology group published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, which defined cisplatin and paclitaxel as the standard in recurrent cervical cancer. And then that was great, uh, but we added bevacizumab to it in 2014. And the Japanese said, well, why use cisplatin? Let's use carboplatin. And now we've been trying to work on immunotherapy. And in 2018, we got accelerated approval in second line cervical cancer. We don't count chemotherapy and radiation as a line uh, of single agent pembrolizumab in pdl one positive greater than CPS1. That's great. But why don't we move it earlier? with chemotherapy that we defined in 2009, or even with chemotherapy and bevacizumab, which we defined in 2014. Oh, we did. And we did, and it worked. Pembrolizumab added to chemotherapy with or without bevacizumab in first-line metastatic disease at the first interim analysis improved every metric. Overall survival, progression-free survival, response, there is even a trend to improve patient reported outcomes, which is the most important. We not only have to keep patients alive, but we have to keep them feeling good. And this was so transformational that it was published at the presidential session at the 2021 European Society of Medical Oncology with a concomitant publication in the New England Journal of Medicine. And hopefully it will evolve the global standard of care in first line metastatic disease with global improvements, global approvals and reimbursements to help patients who need this medication. Keynote 826 was a randomized phase three study of 617 patients adding pembrolizumab in a double blinded way at 200 milligrams uh, every three weeks to either carboplatin or cisplatin, depending on the scenario. Remember the Japanese uh, 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 showed us a non-inferiority with carboplatin in 2015. And paclitaxel at 175 milligrams per square meter. Uh, and there were uh, lots of endpoints. So endpoints of overall survival, progression-free survival. And there were three pre-specified biomarker groups. Uh, CPS, uh, uh, PDL1 expression greater than one, greater than 10, an all comer. And the study met all those metrics, regardless of biomarker status, with a 33% improvement in the patients that were alive at two years in the all comer subgroup. So not, that, that's very remarkable because uh, uh, you know, a third of improvement uh, is, is, is really substantial. Yeah, I think this will be immediately adopted in clinical practice once regulatory approval and reimbursement occurs. Um, I think there'll continue to be some controversy. Uh, does the patient need bevacizumab? Uh, uh, I get it, it's either a triplet or a quadruplet. Um, I think we've already sorted that out. Uh, we know when to use bevacizumab. It's been around now for seven years. So my answer to that question, when do you use bevacizumab when you can when you should. And there are a number of contraindications uh, to bevacizumab uh, uh, related to the agent, but also unique to the, to the disease entity. Patients with cervical cancer who receive bevacizumab are at about a 10% risk of a vaginal fistula rate, a connection between the vagina and the rectum uh, uh, or the bladder in the rectum. So you should use it when you can. But the question of if you should use pembrolizumab, and the answer is yes, because there are very few contraindications to pembrolizumab, they do exist, but because it has such an impact on all the therapeutic metrics, including overall survival, progression-free survival, response rate, 
and even the favorable uh, uh, patient reported outcomes associated with those adverse reactions, I think it's going over time going to become a no brainer. Mm -hmm.